Okay, so I had just finished my fifth cup of coffee when it came to me. A theory of cognitive function development. Now, I can't say for sure if I was hallucinating at that point or not, but I got the right thing. And you know, looking back at it, it still kind of makes sense. You know, I think a lot of INFPs struggle with feeling incomplete. Some INFPs struggle with feeling like they're not strong enough for this world, not suited for it, they're not able to fend for themselves, to provide for themselves, or to make it in the world. Some feel that they're too sensitive, that the world is too rough and difficult to survive and adapt in. And some feel that people never take them seriously, that people underestimate them, that people don't listen to them or hear them. But there are also INFP superheroes, people that have mastered their INFP personality type to the point where they can break all the rules. These INFPs, they're not in a box anymore. They're not partial, incomplete people, but full, rounded people with three-dimensional personalities. So I thought I'd make a video about it. These are eight healthy things INFPs do. These things come with maturity and time, and it often takes years to work through all of this. So eventually, with age and experience, I believe that you can master all eight cognitive functions and become a cognitive superhuman. Now, first of all, before I get started with this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button. Yeah, truth is, you're not a true INFP unless you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. I'm the number one YouTube channel on INFPs. I promise. Uh, you won't regret it. No refunds if you do. So let's get on with it. Eight healthy things INFPs do. First of all, the most fundamental thing you should have as an INFP and something you need to nurture through the rest of your life. You are a valuable person with unique ideas and a unique perspective on the world. You are needed and you must always stay true to who you are and what you want. You must always be able to listen to and hear yourself and who you are and what you want. That is the most baseline fundamental thing any INFP should do. Always Maintain a healthy relationship with introverted feeling. Be your own counselor. Be the person that listens to yourself. Because even if nobody else does, as long as you are able to listen to yourself, as long as you are able to hear yourself and honor yourself and your principles and what you want, that's already a step in the right direction. That's already a good beginning. Start there, please. The second thing you want to do is develop a healthy relationship with extroverted intuition. Yeah, that's your second job. The second thing you need to work on, and that is, first of all, know what you are worth and what you deserve. So many INFPs out there struggle with imposter syndrome. They deny themselves opportunities. They feel they are not beautiful enough, not worthy enough to achieve new great opportunities. They're not capable or well-adjusted enough to venture into the world, to take risks, to try new things, to have adventures and to experience things. And this is what gets a lot of INFPs stuck. They're stuck in a fantasy world. They're not able to venture out of the window. They're not able to jump out. They're not able to seize opportunities because they don't know what they are worth and what they deserve. So know what you're worth and what you deserve. Know that you are worth opportunities. Know that you deserve freedom. Know that you deserve these possibilities. Not because of any qualities you have or skills that you have or anything you do. You don't need to explain why you deserve these things. You just do. You just deserve the chance to try new things and to have new experiences. Just because you are you, you know. Uh, the world is for all of us. We don't need to earn our permission to be in this world. The third thing. The third healthy thing INFPs do, and that is develop their introverted sensing. Yes, you can see a pattern here. The third thing you need to do is develop introverted sensing. And that means take the time to create a solid foundation for yourself. 
That means have a solid grasp of who you are. Some base things that you can always return to if things get shaky or if the world gets stressful. Know that introverted sensing is always there to back you up if you need it. If you're afraid, if you are hurt by the world, if things are difficult, have a home, have a room, have a place you can go to to center yourself, to calm yourself. And somewhere you can say, I built this, I made this for myself. I have this in order. My world around me might be chaotic. My relationships might be up and down. Things around me might not always be perfect, but I have this environment, this place, this space, this meadow in nature, this room uh, with all these posters and cute drawings and all those things, you know. I have this bed I really like. I have uh, this clean room that I feel good about being in. And that's already a start. No matter what, have that solid foundation for yourself. And if you don't have it, create it and take care of it. Finally, not finally, we're just getting started. Uh, extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking is the fourth thing you need to practice and that is just develop the ability to stand up for yourself. Ultimately, you can have all kinds of great values and important things about yourself and important causes and a sense of self, but if you're not able to stand up for yourself, if you can't speak out for what you want, if you can't do anything, you're never gonna feel like you're able to contribute any value. You're gonna feel like uh, you're stuck in an environment you're powerless over. You need extroverted thinking to get the power to represent yourself to the world. Up until that point, up until the point where you can develop extroverted thinking, you're not able to be yourself in the world around you. You are able to understand and know who you are inside, but it's only with extroverted thinking that you're able to execute who you are, execute that protocol on the world. So you need to develop that ability to speak out and say this is what i want and this is what i need and this is what's important to me and to not back down to not back down basically when people challenge you on it when people go but why do you want that and if people go no you can't have that to still say but I, i'm gonna fight for that and i'm still gonna i still think i deserve it and i still think i have a right to that basically you have a right to be yourself you have a right to your identity and you have a right to your views and you have a right to speak out for what you want. And people, okay, people don't have to listen, but uh, you have to be able to at least speak your piece and to say what you think, no matter if they listen or not. So yeah, extra to thinking, very important. <laughs> Develop it, please. <laughs> now we're getting into the interesting parts here. Extroverted feeling. What you ultimately want to do is, as an INFP, you want to, once you've done all these things, transform into a butterfly. Now, up to this point, yeah, you've been a wallflower, you've uh, uh, developed a shell, you've uh, developed the ability to be yourself, but also to uh, build up this base armor uh, for the world so that you can protect yourself and that you can stand up for yourself. But you've yet to become a butterfly. You've yet to show in the world your true colors. A lot of time it's difficult for INFPs to express themselves to the world. A lot of people actually think INFPs are cold. A lot of people think INFPs are kind of grey. From the outside, INFPs don't really look like much to the world. INFPs can look a bit tame, a bit boring, a bit... Uh... Yeah, the thing is... INFPs are far from that. INFPs have an incredibly colorful world on the inside. And only when they develop extroverted feeling in a relationship to extroverted feeling can they start showing those colors to the world. It's with extroverted feeling that INFPs are able to truly communicate and express themselves to the world. It gives you self-transformation. Ultimately, Extroverted feeling is self-transformative for an INFP. When you ex start developing this function, you almost change into a completely different person. A lot of time, this is one of the biggest shifts a person will make. 
being able to develop extroverted feeling as an INFP is going to give you color, not just on the inside, but also on the outside. And it's going to make people see you and it's going to make people notice you. They're going to say, whoa, that person is colorful. Wow, that person has identity. Wow, that person has strong values. Wow, that person has passion. It almost puts a homing beacon on your head. And uh, here's a warning label. Um, when this color starts to come off, people are going to notice you and not everyone is going to like you. Some people are going to say, uh, that's uglier. Some people are going to say that's beautiful. So you're going to have more critics and you're going to have more supporters. Notice and accept this. Yes, by being yourself openly and being vulnerable with the world, you open yourself to criticism. And that's why a lot of people never get to this point. A lot of INFPs are never able to uh, get past this stage of developing extroverted feeling. Because it's so scary that rejection that you can face if you put yourself out there if you reveal your work to the world if you show people your art your ideas your possibilities your dreams it's scary it's like being naked it's like undressing and it's a truly scary experience a lot of time it will start in small steps you'll start opening up gradually it will be small things you say and do and You'll do it and then you'll pull back and you'll be like, ah, why did I do that? And then you'll do it again and then you'll get scared and you'll be like, oh, uh, why, why, why did I say anything? I shouldn't have done it. And it goes in these stages, but you start feeling this urge, this desire to go on a journey, this desire to start on a quest. And yeah, uh, you need that. Uh, we need that to be full and real people, you know. Uh, of course, there is a fullness in being able to have a solid grasp of who you are and a solid identity and a solid purpose. But there is a vividness, there is an intensity to having and wearing that personality on the outside, to wear your own identity like clothes on top of yourself. <laughs> and um, it's a truly self-transformative experience. So learn to do this. Now, after you've done this, we're going to talk about introverted intuition. Introverted intuition is uh, the sixth step for a healthy INFPs. The sixth thing healthy INFPs will do. What I want you to do is, when you get to this step, develop a supportive vision or concept to reinforce your value system and moral compass. Take your time to develop an existential framework, a philosophy, a life philosophy that backs up who you are and why you are the way you are. Basically, get to writing, get to envisioning, thinking about, okay, but why am I this way? Because a lot of time, INFPs, they have this miraculous like grasp of who they are, and they have lots of strong, small values. But a lot of time, they're spread out like dots on a the map. They're, you have this thing you like, and you have this thing you like, and you have this thing you like. But a lot of time, INFPs, they, they feel a bit like uh, a million people in one. They feel a bit like scattered people. Like They feel a bit like their whole personality is spread out uh, like dots on a map but they cannot really see the bigger picture of who they are and their whole identity and why they are the way they are. But I promise you, there is some existential framework or concept that cannot be navigate this. There is a map. <laughs> and if you can understand this map and if you can see how all those weird quirks that you have, all those silly things you do, silly expressions, word choices, feelings, values, all those things fit together you'll also start feeling a bit more complete as a person. You'll start feeling like, hey, I'm not just a silly person just with all these crazy weird things. There is actually a pattern. There's so actually like something overarching uh, about myself, some real philosophy or some concept that can explain most of the things about me or a lot of things about me. After you're done with this, the seventh step is to temper yourself and to be able to stand tall even in difficult environments. Many INFPs, they 
flutter around in the wind. They, they're easily shaken up by things that happen around them. They're easily overwhelmed by intense environments. A lot of the time INFPs identify as highly sensitive people. They get anxious, restless, they get nervous. Uh, when things get stressful, when things get intense, when things get difficult, INFPs are easily lost off their balance. When you develop extorted sensing, you start to counteract that. Extorted sensing can help you develop a sense of judgment about yourself. And that's basically like this whole like realization that, come on, yeah, come on, Eric, come on, INFP. <laughs> uh, you can do this. You need to do this. This is important. Uh, it's like this survival sense. It's this ability to not just be aware of who you are, but also to be able to be your own judge and your own master, your own ruler, no matter how scary it is, no matter how intense it is. If you can be your own master, if you can be your own ruler, if you can be your own judge, you can decide for yourself how you're going to deal with these situations and you can be in charge of yourself and your own instincts. And this doesn't mean that you won't feel anxious anymore, or that you won't feel difficult anymore. You'll still feel everything the same way you did before. The question is just, are these feelings going to take over? Are they going to make you run? Are they going to make you lose your center? Are they going to make you shake up? Are you going to be able to go up on that stage, even if it's scary, and reveal yourself to the world and to speak out for yourself, even if you're scared, even if you're nervous, even if you're shaking, even if you're not sure if you're going to be able to do it? You know, extorted sensing can help you get the power to do that and to push through and persevere in those situations. And I promise you, you can do it. You can learn to master this function. Maybe it's not going to be a direct process. Maybe it's not going to happen immediately. Maybe it's going to be step by step. But you can learn to become strong even in a storm. You can learn to stand tall, even when the world is trying to push you to cover. Finally, the eighth most important function to develop as an INFP, introverted thinking. Now, with this function, you develop the possibility to be critical of yourself in a healthy way, to analyze your own thoughts and experiences. It's with this function that you can develop your base self-awareness. You're not just going to be able to, uh, in a way, feel that you have values or feel that things are important to you, but you're also going to be able to know why these things are important to you and why they matter. And beyond that, you're not just going to know what you want, but you're going to know how to get it. Introverted thinking will be that aha, that eureka, that guides you in how to realize your values and how to express yourself and how to get what you want. Yeah, this function is probably going to develop late in life. It's going to take time. Um, and that's fine. Give yourself time to develop. Give yourself time to round yourself out. Don't rush through these stages because if you rush, chances are you're going to miss some things. Take the time to do these things and work through these things one at a time and you'll get there. And every time you do, you're going to feel like life gets better. People don't realize this, but people get happier the older they get. I mean, the people believe that life has an expiration date. People believe that once you hit a certain age, it's too late to do anything. That's not true. The older you get, the happier you get. The older you get, the more full and rich you get, provided that you're able to work on yourself, provided that you're able to make the right choices in life provided that you're able to remain true to yourself throughout your life, if you can stay true to yourself, if you can keep working to yourself, if you can keep on working on yourself, you're going to be a happier person with every year. And things are going to get better with every year. I promise you this. Thank you all for watching. And once again, don't forget to subscribe and check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Have a nice day and see you all in the next video.